Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Monster Girl Quest. Last time, we collected Undyne from the No Region, and I have finished off the No Region. And our next goal is to collect Salamander from the Gold Region, so let's get to it. The last obstacle on our way north is the Great Forest of Noah. Once we're out of the forest, we'll be in the Gold Region. Hey, Alice? How do they decide who the Monster Lord is? It's a might makes right system, Luca. <laughs> As we walk through the trees, I start to question Alice. Your mother was a Monster Lord too, right? So is it hereditary? When the Monster Lord dies, the selection for the next begins. The first choice is indeed the previous Monster Lord's daughter. But the Monster Lord's strength is the most important thing. It isn't a simple hereditary system, since that could put someone weak in power. That's true. So all the monsters wishing to become Monster Lords start to gather. And of course, since they want to be a Monster Lord, they're all very strong. They then battle against the previous Monster Lord's daughter in combat. The one who comes out top is the new Monster Lord. That seems kind of troublesome. Isn't there a way to decide it peacefully? Only the strongest monster can become the Monster Lord. There are a lot of monsters that live on their own and ignoring the rules. Without the strength to subdue them, they would constantly be rioting and causing trouble. But because of the selection method, it's known all over the world that she's the strongest and unwise to rebel against. Oh, if only that were so true, Alice. There are apparently plenty of monsters who don't give a damn. <laughs> I see. Seems like a crazy selection process. But I guess it's more like a display of the new Monster Lord's power. But since the first Monster Lord, no other family has sat upon the throne besides my own. Do you know why? Why? I bet they cheat somehow. Though she'd get mad if I said that. <laughs> my ancestors, my mother, we are all linked by the blood to the fur to the original monster lord. Always striving to be the strongest, we devote ourselves to training. That's why we have never lost in combat to win the throne. To make sure we never shame our ancestors, we won't allow ourselves to sit anywhere but on the Monster Lord's throne. Yeah, which is an interesting point. So, originally there was the original Monster Lord, aka Dark God Alphines. And then there were the six ancestors. So, Dark God Alphines created the six ancestors as kind of an offshoot of herself, similar to how Ilias created uh, Lucifina, Michaela, and Eden. But Alice's line, starting with the second Monster Lord, is the only one biologically connected to the original Monster Lord, the Dark God Atlas. <laughs> so just like how Ilias puts it uh, with Lucifina, it wasn't uh, done biologically so they're not blood related. But anyway, just kind of an interesting note there. Anyway, let's move on. 
Alice puffs up with pride as we walk through the forest. So... You beat everyone in combat when you took the throne? When I took the throne... Something happened that has never happened before. Four challengers came forward to claim the Monster Lord's seat. Which is odd, because it seems like the second most appears to have been back in Black Alice's time, 500 years ago, when three challengers came forth. And just like Alice, they kind of, they became a, a, some of her knights of sorts. I forget exactly what they were called. But Heinrich had to fight them, just like Luca has to fight uh, the four heavenly knights now. So those four and I fought in a battle royale. But there would be five people powerful enough to lay claim to the Monster Lord's sea. It could be said that this is a golden age in monster history. Well, I mean, just because they're strong, I mean, are there rules as for how strong they have to be before they can challenge you? Because otherwise it just seems like anyone with the nerve can make the claim. I mean, it's not like you killed those who lost. The four heavenly knights are still here. Could it be those four? Yes, they're currently the four heavenly knights. The unmatched dragon swordswoman, Prodigy Grand Baria. The proud and powerful queen succubus, Alma Elma. The one in charge of many of the past Monster Lord's educations, and rumored to be the strongest monster, Tamamo. The leader of tens of thousands strong slime race, Arubeti. And of course me. As you can imagine, it was quite a fierce battle. So the five of you were in a battle royale? It sounds crazy. The first out was Alma Elma. After only a little while, she surrendered. So Alma Elma was the weakest? She had plenty of energy left over to continue if she wanted. But that girl always does whatever she wants, so I don't know what she was thinking. Next, Arobetti and Tamamo smashed each other, knocking each other out. Neither of them are weaker than Granberia, but they couldn't keep up with the confusion in the fight. So basically the four heavenly knights are more or less equal in ability? They have different affinities for different opponents and situations, but they are more or less equal in raw ability. At any rate, eventually it came down to a single combat between Granberry and me. Her skills even brought me to my knees once. Is what I want to say, but I don't have any knees. <laughs> you don't need to make any bad jokes, Alice. I... I wasn't really trying to make a joke. Of course you were! <laughs> Don't pout. <laughs> no. Anyway, she tried using her techniques more than once. But after I saw them once, they didn't work again. I took victory over her. So then it ended happily with you as the new monster lord? The four of them acknowledged my ability and pledged allegiance as the four heavenly knights. Which is another purpose of the throne selection battles. Being the other powerful monsters fairly in combat r gets rid of any grudges or later power struggles, granting a peaceful reign with low chance of rebellion. M most of the time. Huh. Seems like it isn't as crazy as I thought. It's what the first generation of my family decided. 
Their intelligence was deeper than the sea. It's genius! I, I get it already! <laughs> Taking pride in family values and traditions. <clears throat> As we walk through the forest talking, a monster suddenly stands in our way. Ah, the Mantis Girl. One of those just... Just slap some boobs and a face on it and call it good type of monsters. But while the design is a little boring, she is a little interesting the fact that, in a reverse of the situation, she'll eat Luca if, she, if he doesn't mate with her. So... That being the case, I'd still smash. <laughs> A human male? How rare. I'll capture you and mate. Gah! A strong looking monster. She seems really agile with powerful arms. And that thick insect carapace. Tying her head on seems like it will be difficult. Should I try Undyne's power? Yeah, let's waste the SP with Undyne. Because she is useless at the moment. Undyne, lend me your power! Thin Wall of War surrounds Luka. The, this... The Wall of War stopped the enemy's attacks? Male stuff. Spit it out. Ow. Ah! She went right through the wall of water and hit me anyway! All I felt was like the damage was reduced by a tiny bit. What the heck is this? It isn't useful at all. Seems like I shouldn't waste SP on it. Does the same thing as Earth, only worse! So, speaking of, let's get Noma. <laughs> Man, bad touch. And just in time, because she's <laughs> embracing Luca. Alright, broke free. We would have instantly lost if we went with Sil. Eh? This is a human's power. Actually, it's the power of the spirits, but sure. And, because we can, we'll summon Sylph at the same time. <laughs> stuff, stuff. Alright, nice dodge. Start the attack now. <laughs> Males. Taste. <laughs> Stuff. Sick. <laughs> Males. Taste. Uh <laughs> human smell. Nice crit. <laughs> Man, bad touch. Huh? This is a human's power? With both Sylph and Gnome up, we don't have to worry too much. Her bind isn't an issue, and any status effects will be taken care of by Sylph. Eh, uh, chess, finish. Nice. 
Mail stuff, spit out. Five turns. You should probably just play it safe and meditate. I don't think she's within Death Sword Chaos Star range. Chess finish. Not yet. Not yet. Right, she won't bind us again for a while. So now I think we can Death Star Chaos Star. Alright. Perfect. I don't know what kind of sound that's actually supposed to be, but whatever. <laughs> Mantis Girl turns into a normal Mantis. Mantis Girl was defeated. Luke is now 37. Mantis Girl. An insect monster strongly resembling a praying mantis. A carnivorous monster that... Uh, that I'm getting too tired. Mantis girl. An insect monster strongly resembling a praying mantis. A carnivorous monster that eats not only other monsters, but human beings as well. Their favorite food, however, is male stuff. And will both use them for reproduction and for feeding. Due to their unique insect-based uh, vagina, any male caught by them will be enraptured in unique sensations. After forcing her prey to multiple finishes and weakening them, they will then usually eat their mate. However, when the mantis chooses a mate for reproductive purposes, she won't eat them. After she has been inseminated, she will lay her eggs on the male's body. The eggs will turn. Well, the eggs will in turn stimulate the man, forcing him to multiple finishes, providing nourishment for the newborns. Like this, the male is used as a tool for reproduction all the way until their birth. Once captured, the male will be kept as a reproductive tool for the rest of his life. Luca was forced to finish it as the mantis girl bad touched him. After that, Luca was nothing more than a breeding tool for the mantis girl. Mating with a mantis girl so she can reproduce. What sort of hero are you if you're creating monsters rather than destroying them? To her high offensive ability and binding move, Gnome is basically required. Self won't let you evade much, so refrain from using her. In addition, Endyne isn't useful yet. She reduces less damage than Gnome, so refrain from using her at all. Now go, oh brave Luca. Destroy that disgusting monster that tries to mate with humans. <laughs> 